All right, thank you guys. The Oklahoma Sooners take on the West Virginia Mountaineers, and that's going to be a 12 p.m. Eastern kickoff in Morgan, uh, Morgantown. Yeah, that's the word. Uh, anyway, the Sooners are minus 13 on the road here. Totals 55. We're 4-0 in our last four college basketball tier package picks on patreon.com slash Brock Page. We're also a perfect 4-0 in our last four extra daily picks on that site as well. And if you want to access today's extra daily pick, it's only going to cost you just $2.99. Now, we currently have over 725 members signed up and active on that site. And if you want to join those folks and get in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Now, the Sooners... Uh, failed to cover the number in their most recent outing, and that was against Baylor. The Sooner defense is also giving up nearly 27 points a game on the road. And uh, in addition to that, they're allowing <coughs> almost, uh, well, about 275 passing yards in that same category. Now, West Virginia on the other side, they're still undefeated at home this season. 5-0 and straight up in Morgantown. 5-0 and against the spread in those five ball games. The Mountaineers are giving up just 12 points a game on their home turf. And they're also giving up just 67 rush yards a game in that same category. Now, Tony Fields, the second, he leads the defense with 88 total tackles, along with two PBUs and an interception. Defensive lineman Akeem Mesador also has five sacks on the season, along with 33 total tackles from the defensive line. Now, the Mountaineers are holding their opponents to uh, just 160 passing yards a game at home as well. Now, total-wise, West Virginia is 60% to the over in Morgantown, 4-2 and two to the over in their last six at any location. Meanwhile, the Sooners on the other side, they saw five out of their last eight get over the line themselves, 2-1 <coughs> to the over when traveling. I'm going to lean toward the underdog, West Virginia Mountaineers, plus 13, keeping this one close. And the over 55 in that game. And before we go ahead and move on, just want to take another quick time out and welcome you to the video. Got some lines and personal leans out for college football week 15. But before we dive into some more free content right here on YouTube, just got to quickly remind you once again that we are 4-0 in our last four college basketball tier package picks on patreon.com slash Brock Page. <clears throat> We're also 4-0 in our last four extra daily picks on that site as well. Now, you might be wondering, why would you sign up for picks on Patreon, where you can get them right here for free on YouTube, and it's certainly a, a great thought, a great consideration. If I was in your uh, position right now watching me on YouTube, I'd probably be thinking the same thing. But if you were to go out there and bet every single game that's on the board, side in total, that I give you here on YouTube, uh, you know, kind of like I do with my breakdowns here. It's certainly not a winning formula for success. And as a matter of fact, it's a recipe for disaster. You just can't go out there betting every single game on the slate. The books are way too smart. They're way too sharp with the numbers. The odds become, thank you, the odds become massively more against you. And to be honest with you, the bookies just have so much more money than you and I do combined to be able to absorb that type of action. So what I do on Patreon is <coughs> I make life a lot easier for you. I break it down and focus in on just three to four premium selections per day. They're my personal plays, games that I personally have action on. And I'll tell you this much, I'm having a lot more success <laughs> betting on games that way uh, versus uh, wagering on every single game on the board side in total. So, uh, you know, keep all that uh, in mind with regard to uh, betting the games. Now, currently we have over 700 members, I'm sorry, we have over 725 members signed up and active on that site. And if you want to join those folks and get in on the action, link for that site is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. And moving on, we're going to take a look at another football game here for Saturday. It's going to be in the ACC, and uh, hopefully it's on our board. No, it's not. I'll tell you what, Xfinity really kind of slacking with uh, their uh, Xfinity app. But uh, anyway, I'm talking about North Carolina versus Miami, 3.30 p.m. Eastern start time. The Miami Hurricanes are minus three at home, total 66. 
Now, the Hurricanes are on a five-game winning streak, 4-0 straight up at home this season. This uh, Hurricane offense is scoring 35 points a game and rushing for nearly 200 yards per contest on their home turf. Cameron Harris is rushing for 5.2 yards per carry, and he scored eight times on the ground this season. Meanwhile, quarterback De'Eric King has rushed for nearly 500 yards on the ground himself and scored four times rushing. King's also been able to get the job done with his arm, over 2,300 yards passing on the season and 20 TDs. His favorite target's been senior Mike Harley, who has 43 grabs for 653 yards and five TD catches. This Miami defense on the other side of the ball, they've been dominant at home as well. Just 14 points a game they're giving up on their home field. Under 320 total yards a game they're giving up at home as well. Jalen Phillips has six and a half sacks on the season, 41 total tackles and an interception. Meanwhile, safety Bubba Bolden also has 52 total tackles, along with three PBUs and an interception himself. Bolden also has four forced fumbles from the secondary. Now Miami's taking on a UNC team who gives up nearly 31 points a game on the road and over 400 yards of total offense when they travel as well. The Tar Heels have failed to cover the number in their last three straight, and they also went just 2-5 and five against the spread in their last seven. Now, total-wise, when it comes to the number in this one, USC's last two straight both stayed under the posted number. <coughs> they also saw two out of their last four road games stay under the line. Meanwhile, the Hurricanes on the other side of things, they saw their last two straight stay under the total themselves, 4-2 and two to the under in their last six. I'm going to lean toward the Miami Hurricanes minus three and the under 66 in that contest. All right, next matchup, it is going to be another 3.30 p.m. Eastern game. Not on our big screen, uh, but it is a Big Ten matchup, uh, certainly worth watching. And that is Wisconsin versus Iowa, 3.30 p.m. Eastern kickoff at Kinnick Stadium. Now, Iowa's the one-and-a-half-point favorite at home, totals 44. The Hawkeyes are on a five-game winning streak, 37 points a game. They're scoring during that stretch. I was also rushing for nearly a buck eighty a game. Tyler Goodson and Makai Sargent have both combined for over a thousand yards rushing and thirteen total touchdowns on the ground. Meanwhile, defensively, the Hawkeyes are giving up just sixteen yards a game at uh, uh, sixteen uh, points a game. I'm sorry, at uh, Kinnick Stadium. Now, Jack Kerner has three interceptions from the secondary, thirty nine tackles, and two PBUs for the defensive back. Uh, Davion Nixon and Chauncey Golston, they have 10 total sacks between the two of them as well. And linebacker Nick Neiman also leads the Hawkeyes with 69 total tackles on this season. <clears throat> now they're taking on a Wisconsin team who scored just 13 total points in their last two ball games themselves. The Badgers are on a two-game losing streak, and they failed to cover the number in both of those contests. And the Badgers are throwing for less than 180 yards a game on the road. And when it comes to the total in this one, the Badgers' last two straight stayed under the number. Meanwhile, two out of the Hawkeyes' the last three home games stayed under the line themselves. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the Iowa Hawkeyes, minus one and a half, and the under 44. All right, next matchup I have for you. Let's take a look and see. It is actually on our big screen. All right, hallelujah, we got one. Anyway, uh, I'm talking about Washington versus Oregon, 4 p.m. Eastern start time. The Oregon Ducks are minus five and a half, totals 55 and a hook. The Ducks lost their last two straight, 0-3 against the spread in their last three as well. Oregon, they lost to the likes of Cal and Oregon State during that span as well. The Ducks are giving up 32 points a game and 232 rush yards a game at home. Now, they're taking on a Washington team who's three and one straight up on the season themselves. Wins against Utah, Arizona, and Oregon State. Uh, Washington scoring over 30 points a game and gaining more than 400 yards per contest. Junior tight end Cade Oton has caught 18 balls for 258 and three scores. Meanwhile, running back Sean McGrew is averaging 5.3 yards per carry and has punched it uh, into the end zone four times on the ground himself. Meanwhile, this Husky defense on the other side of the ball, they're allowing just 185 yards a game passing. Linebacker Zion Tapula Fatui, uh, Fatui has, uh, you guys get it, Zion Tapula Fatui, I guess. 
Uh, he's got seven sacks through four ball games, three forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. Meanwhile, Edifuan Ulafasho also has 47 total tackles along with a sack, four PBUs, one forced fumble, and two fumble recoveries. Now, total wise, two out of Washington's last three ball games got over the posted number. Meanwhile, Oregon is 2 0 to the over at home, 4 1 to the over for the entire season. Give me the underdog Washington Huskies plus 5.5 in the over, 55 and a hook. All right, next ball game. It is going to be Cincinnati versus Tulsa, 4 p.m. Eastern kickoff at Chapman Stadium. The Cincinnati Bearcats are the 12 point favorite on the road, to- uh, numbers 44. Tulsa's on a five-game winning streak, 5-1 five and one against the spread for the entire season. Golden Hurricane, they're scoring 31 points a game at home and throwing for over 305 yards a game in that same category. Zach Smith has thrown for nearly 1,500 yards along with 11 touchdown passes. His favorite wide receiver, Keelan Stokes, has 35 grabs for 508 yards and a couple of touchdown catches. Meanwhile, this Tulsa defense gives up just 22 points per contest and less than 210 passing yards per game. Zaven Collins has four interceptions from that linebacker spot, two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery for the junior. Collins also has 52 total tackles and four sacks. Two of his four interceptions were uh, uh, returned for pick sixes, by the way. (coughs) Safety Kendarin Ray also has 52 total tackles, along with five PBUs. They're taking on a Cincinnati team who... Failed to cover the number against UCF in their last outing. They gave up 33 total points to the Knights in that ball game. Since he's also failed to cover the number in three out of their last five head-to-head meetings with Tulsa. And now total-wise, since he's last two straight got over the number, three and one to the over in their last four. Meanwhile, Tulsa on the other side, they saw two out of their last four ball games get over the line themselves. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the Tulsa Golden Hurricane plus 12, keeping this one close in the over 44 in that ball game. And with that, we're going to dive into our next and final matchup for the show. Uh, unfortunately, another game not on our board. No real surprise there. But I'm talking about Ole Miss versus Texas A&M. 8 p.m. Eastern kickoff in College Station. The Texas A&M Aggies are minus 16, total 72 and a half. The Aggies have won their last six straight. Victories over the likes of Auburn, LSU, and Florida during that stretch. The Aggies also scored 35 points per contest on average during that five-game winning streak as well. Kellen Mond's throwing for nearly 1,800 yards on the season, along with 18 touchdowns and just a pair of interceptions. Running back Isaiah Spiller has also rushed for over 900 yards and scored six times on the ground himself. This Aggie defense has also allowed just 10 points a game in their last three contests as well. Buddy Johnson has 73 total tackles along with a pair of sacks and a pick six. Johnson also has three PBUs and two forced fumbles on the season as well. Now they are taking on an Ole Miss program (coughs) who lost to the likes of Auburn and Arkansas this season. The Rebels were also giving up 39 points a game and they have just four interceptions all season long. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the Texas A&M Aggies, minus 16, and the over, 72 and a half in that contest. (coughs) And with that, guys, we're going to dive into our quick pick recap, brought to you by Patreon.com slash Brock Page, where we are 4-0 in our last four college basketball tier package picks. I like West Virginia plus 13, over 55, Miami minus 3, under 66. I'm leaning toward Iowa, minus 1.5, under 44. I like Washington, plus 5.5, over 55 and a hook. I'm leaning toward Tulsa, plus 12, over 44. And last but certainly not least, I like Texas A&M, minus 16, and the over, 72.5. And And with that, guys, we're going to dive into some shout-outs. And from our YouTube platform, shout-out to Sauce Sensei Master Drip Lord. Uh, Shout-out to Vernon Williard. Bo Dunn, Pittsburgh Gentleman PA, Demetrius Milonis, Armando Garcia, Sachin Sonar, Tasha M, Jason Kelly, and last but certainly not least, gotta give a shout out to my man, I'm talking about the Ding Man, C. Dinger. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for me, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you guys decide to get a package here today, just keep in mind, we'll bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. 
Most important, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, <coughs> excuse me, happy Monday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash Brock Page.